In this video, we're going to take a closer look at parametric features inside of Autodesk Inventor. Here with the parametric features IPT from our working files directory, we're going to examine this a little bit deeper. We're going to play with this particular part a little bit and just experience how we can make changes to a model effectively. Let's begin by examining the history. On the left hand side, I can see there is a simple extrusion here with a sketch that helped create it. So that's our sketch based feature. And then we have a fillet. So two simple features to interpret what's going on with this design. Let's begin by examining the first sketch here. I'm going to double click on it to activate it. And we can see that we have a series of lines, circles and arcs, as well as dimensions that helped shape this particular sketch. There's also a anchoring point here on the circle on the left hand side. This is actually anchored to our origin of the file. If I expand the origin folder, I can see the center point is tied right there. If I look at the axes, you can see they're also referenced there as well. Since this is tied to the origin, this center point will not move. If I make changes to this, such as the overall length of two and a half, it should stretch to the right. So let's double click on this, two and a half inches, and here I'll change it to three. I'll approve that check mark. So you can see based on that anchor point of the origin, it updates in an expected manner and makes it grow to the right. Now, if I make changes to anything else in here, such as this diameter, I'll go ahead and double click on that and make it 0.375. I'll approve that check mark there. You can see it changes not only that circle, but the circle down on the right hand side. That's because they have a relationship between them that when one updates, so does the other. Here, I'll change this back to five by double clicking on it and have it be that 0.5 value. I'm done looking at this now, so I'll right click and choose Finish 2D Sketch. And that returns us back to our part modeling environment. And you can see that the part actually got a little bit longer because that sketch that helped define that feature also got longer. If I were to double click on the extrusion two here, basically you'll be able to see how that was given thickness. So here this is currently 0.15 inches tall and that's going in the positive Z direction. How can I tell it's a positive Z direction? Well, I can look at this triad in the lower left down here, and I can see the X, Y, and Z Cartesian directions in space. Now I can change these values here, such as currently 0.15 inch to 0.25 inch. You can see a dynamic update happen as you do that, and I'll prove that with the green check mark. Now there's other ways you can change the model dimensions without having to go into the sketch, or going into the feature. If you were to right click on your extrusion and choose the option called show dimensions, it will give you the dimensions for the sketch as well as the dimensions for the feature. So here you can see the 0.5 value I changed, the three value I had changed previously, and also the 0.25, which is my overall height of this design. So here I'll change the three to a value of three and a half. I'll hit enter to approve that. I'll change this to 0.375, check mark that to approve it. And for my thickness value, I'll change it from 0.25 to 0.125. Now, before I approve this, I wanna point out the fact that this dimension is called D23. As you're applying any sort of value to your model, whether it's a sketch dimension or a feature value, it's creating these D placeholders. So let's remember D23 for a moment. Let's go ahead and approve that. Nothing happened here. Nothing really updated with the feature model. You can see the underlying sketch updated, but the overall geometry has not. Whenever you use the show dimensions method of design, you have to force the update to actually take place. So if I go up here to my quick access toolbar, there is a lightning bolt icon. If I click on it, it will force the update of the model so I can see everything change. If you were to use the sketch editing or the feature editing directly, that doesn't happen. You can basically update it automatically when you finish the command. Next, let's take a look at the fillet. If I were to double click on the fillet, I can see that it has a radius value currently of 0.03125 inches. Now what happens with this value is it stays independent of any other feature that's currently being built. So if I made my thickness of this so small that it invalidated my radius, I would have a problem. Let's try that. So currently I have a thickness value that is okay for this particular radius. 
but let's say I try to change the radius to 0.125. Now, as you're seeing, the preview here doesn't look too good. If I approve this, I basically have a fillet that kind of shaved off the top half of my design. It didn't really give me a fillet on the top side, but a very large one on the bottom. I'm going to go back and double click on fillet again. And let's say I change it to 0.188. I'll prove that again, and again, it still is creating a very inappropriate sort of fillet for this type of design. I'll go back to fillet again, and instead of trying to just put any old value in that would work under one circumstance, maybe I'll put a value in that would work under all circumstances. I'm gonna create a parametric relationship between this fillet radius and the thickness of this plastic piece. Do you remember D23? That was the value of my thickness value for this part. So I'm going to have it equal to D23 divided by 4. So no matter what happens to D23, this radius value will always be that divided by 4. A very simple equation to get your design intent across. Just to check how that works, let's go back and use a show dimensions on our extrusion by right-clicking on it. And here, what changes from 0.125 to 0.5, much thicker. I'll go ahead and update this. You can see the fillets maintain a size that is the relationship to that overall thickness value. I can't stress how creating good relationships inside of an inventor model is key to working effectively in this type of software. If you have designs that change in an expected manner, everything is going to update more effectively, and you'll have less problems trying to repair geometry that was not created in an effective manner.